Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about pocketing. I've created a body with three kind of pockets. A complete pocket with the whole piece, a normal pocket with all the four sides closed and the pocket on the corner of the piece where two sides are open and two are closed. So let's start by selecting our body, moving to the path workbench and creating a new job. I will add a tool, let's say I'm going to use the 6mm sand mill with a 3500 speed, both on horizontal and vertical, 18500 spindle speed, remove the default tool, select the proper output, in my case it's GRBL, that's what I use and hit ok so now i have my job i have my body but i will do something different i'll hide the body and show the model in the job i'm used to do it this way i don't know if it's better or worse but in the episode about placement i will explain to you why i show the model of the body and not the body itself so the basic operation you can select the bottom face of the pocket click on the pocket shape button and then click apply you will see there is some toolpath generated but it's kind of obvious that it will leave some unmilled pieces i will just click ok and now i can select the job go to the cam simulator and i will show you what i mean it's nothing like i want it to be what i can do i can change the pattern from zigzag to offset the first option and you can see it moves in parallel lines to the edges of the pocket Okay, so now let's close it and go to the path simulator again and press play. It looks okay, but there are still some pieces that will be left over here. The step over percent means how much the toolbit will overlap on two separate passes. So I'll give it a 50%, click on apply. You see the tool paths updated and I'll go to the simulator again. and now i can see everything is fine of course the corners will be rounded the radius of the corner will be the radius of my tool bit the second type of pattern is zigzag offset it's a combination of the first two you can see now i have the zigzag but also the tool bit will run along the outline of my pocket so that it clears all the remains okay so now let's go back to the simulator and we'll check if everything is okay Yes, it does similar job to the offset. What's the difference between these two? I can only look at the cycle time. For the zigzag offset it's 11 seconds. And if I choose just offset and go to the cycle time, it's 10 seconds. So the offset is kind of faster than zigzag offset. It doesn't happen in all the situations because sometimes free cut tends to overlap much closer in the center than the percentage I told it to. Here it's 50%. If I give it a 60%, let's say, you can see that it actually created more passes than on 50 percent i don't know why it does this and now most probably my cycle time will be higher than zigzag offset and the last two of the type of patterns are line which moves in parallel lines the angle of the lines is given by the angle value of course i have zero which means along the x-axis i can also give it 90 degrees along y-axis and of course any intermediate value. The problem with this is that it tends to leave some unmilled material also just like zigzag you can see here so it's kind of annoying and I believe there are some cases for this but I haven't used it until now. And the last one is grid. Grid is basically two set of lines, one set at zero degrees and one set at 90 degrees. Actually, I believe they are perpendicular to each other because if I enter 45, you can see I have 45 and 135 degrees lines. This also doesn't leave a very nice result because there are also a lot of places where the cutter head won't reach. So now let's change the operation back to offset as uh, that is what I usually use. 
and I leave it at 60% step over. But the problem here seems to be the fact that I just have two passes, two layers. They are 6 millimeters apart as FreeCut's default value for step down is the diameter of the tool. For woodworking this is too much I believe because the wood tends to splinter and so on. So I go to depth, click on the step down formula and I'm gonna make a third of the tool diameter which is 2 millimeters in my case. Now after clicking apply you can see I have several layers but the strain on the machine and on the tool bit will be much smaller so it's better this way also the piece won't crack or splinter because I usually process wood I don't have a cooling problem so I like to make everything faster by changing the keep tool down value you can see it in the data tab by scrolling down under pocket I set keep tool down to true you can see here 31 seconds for my cycle time and if I select the keep tool down to true click away click back on the pocket shape you can see my cycle time is reduced by 7 seconds uh, down to 24 seconds that is because the tool bit won't get up and down after every cut depending on the material this might be a hazard to overheat and you might want to leave it that way. Okay, so now let's hide this operation and let's move to the second pocket, the one with two open sides. Again, I click on the bottom face, click on the pocket tool, click on apply. I have a default zigzag, change it to offset. Click apply again and you can see my operation is kind of ready. But what I don't like is that the cutter head tends to stay on the face. You can see here the cutter head won't move up to the edge so there will be two roundovers at each of the higher edges. Let's first change the step over to 50% so I won't have uh, those pieces in the middle but on the ends there will still be some pieces on the open edges. For now let's close this so I can show you. I will do the cam simulator but first let's uh, disable the first pocket shape because just hiding it doesn't actually disable it. Now let's go and uh, press play button. You can see actually this is a bug. The edges should have been cut away entirely but the roundovers at the corners would still be there. To avoid this and to have uh, flat edges on the sides of the pocket I have to make the cutter head move on these two lines. I open the pocket shape by double clicking it, go to the extensions tab, click on enable extensions and you can see a wire here highlighted yellow. If I check it you can see it highlighted purple this means the cutter head will move over there too. Now you can see we have a line of movement just above the edge of our pocket. This means that at the top left and bottom right corner there will be no round over left also any extra material will be removed okay so now let's disable these two pockets and let's move to the third pocket this is a scenario that i also encountered and struggled a lot with it uh, in the beginning of using the cnc with freecad it's a hole that goes all the way through the body i don't have a bottom face to select it if i select the bottom lines and click on the pocket shape you can see I have an error so how do I do this first I usually modified my body and added a pad on the bottom but that's not the solution well I've learned that the way you can do this is by actually selecting the side faces you select all the side faces click on the pocket tool and here is the pocket of course I also have to change the offset change the step over nothing actually happens because it's a very small pocket and I I can now re-enable my first pockets here is a button to enable or disable an operation just hiding it by pressing space won't show it but when I export the file the operation will be still active if I actually want to remove it from my output file I have to press the toggle active state button for each operation that I want to disable now if I export my file only this pocket will be included so let's re-enable all the pockets and I'll disable the first and the last one and let's go to this one, double click on it to open it and I'm going to take each tab of uh, the operation and I'll explain what everything in here does. The base geometry is about the faces, the edges and so on just as with any other operation in the path workbench. Of course for my pocket it's this face if we were talking about this pocket there would have been all these four faces 
I can add, remove and so on. In the extensions tab I have explained you earlier, for open pockets I can extend the edges so the cutter head the tool bit goes all the way to the edge and uh, it won't leave any round over. The depths of course is the start depth, the final depth, the step down and here is an additional option compared to the profiling, it's a finished step down. I can set it let's say to 0.5 millimeters. And you will see after removing the most of the material there will be one final step to actually leave a nice surface in the end. The height stub is about the safe height and the clearance height which I usually don't set in here. I set them in the job. I'll explain that in another episode. And the most important tab of the pocket is the operation tab. Of course I have the tool controller, the coolant mode if I have coolant which I don't. The cut mode. Uh, rather than clockwise and counterclockwise for pockets, it's climb or conventional. It always tries to leave material on climb if sele selected climb or conventional if selected conventional. The pattern, as I explained for the first pocket, all the five type of patterns, each has its advantages and its disadvantages. I usually use offset because it tends to leave smoothest edges out of them all. The step over percent is a value that represents how much tool paths overlap each other. Usually a value of 50% is okay for a nice smooth finish. A higher value is recommended when you don't really care how the bottom will look. Let's say if you actually have another operation that will finish this face, then you don't need to remove every every little bit. My rule is 50% almost always because there won't be any leftovers on the bottom of the pocket. The pass extension is a very useful yet a very tricky option because I can offset my pocket. You can see that if I put a positive value and click on apply, it actually makes the pocket smaller. If I set a negative value, the cutter head will move closer so the pocket will actually be larger. I think this can be useful if I want to leave just small amount uncut so I can get back with a profiling operation and remove the whole height of the face in just one pass so I have a very smooth finish. I can also use a start point, which I, if I want to define the actual start point, I have to exit the operation, click on it, go to the data tab and at the bottom you can see I can set the actual coordinates of my start points. Uh, you just have to take care because you start point will always move to the start point. Let's say if I have the start point here and my cutter head remained here, it will move directly to the start point. It won't go on the safe height go straight and then lower the cutter head. It will just move diagonally so the start point is a very useful option but it's kind of tricky and you'll have to learn to use it. The use outline is an option which actually does nothing in this scenario but let's modify a little our body so I'll make it visible and on this face let's go to the part design workbench let's make a sketch and let's create a hole here and I'll create this hole through all. Let's hide our body and open the model, open the operation also. You can see it makes the pocket but here it actually won't cut because the cutter head won't fit between this hole and this edge, this face. But I wanted to cut the whole pocket and then I will cut the center hole. How can I do this? Well. That's what use outline is for. It will always create a plane with the outline of my pocket. So now you can see we are back at exactly how I did the pocket without the hole here. And then of course I can go and select this face, go to path and create another pocket for this hole too. Of course you can see it starts from the top so I'll have to go to the depth and adjust the start depth. Now I have two operations, one for cutting this whole pocket and after it cuts the pocket it will go and cut another pocket in this hole. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.